got done looking at something that really um, I feel like isn't being reported. And I feel like with everything that's going on right now, I mean, first of all, we need a dose of optimism. Uh, and I love living in the land of optimism, but I don't like living in the land of Pagliacci or Pollyanna, whichever one it is. I can never remember which one it is. But today we're going to talk about a trend that is just starting to emerge that can make you a ton of money if you're aware of it and then you, if you act out on it or if you act on it rather. Don't act out on it. That would be kind of childish and you'd be acting like a four-year-old. Uh, but we're going to talk about that today. Uh, we're going to talk about the stocks to avoid and the, the ones you want to look at. And we'll talk about some individual stocks, but also about sectors. Uh, and then I'm going to show you because some of you guys may be thinking, okay, yeah, what does this guy know? Uh, he's wearing a Padres hat and it's casual day. Well, it is casual day. It's MLK day. I'm just recording this on Monday for you guys. And um, I don't know, I'm a big Padres fan. So live here in San Diego. And we're going to talk about the actual money that we are going to make. We made a lot of money so far, but the big money has still yet to come. I mean, I, and I'll show you exactly kind of where I've made the money and what uh, my anticipation is on where it's going to go. And I think it's actually, if it's going to be wrong, I think it's going to err on the higher side. In other words, I tend to, I'm tending to be a little bit conservative in my numbers, but we'll see that when we get there. So one of the things that I've noticed here in San Diego, <clears throat> and again, these are going to be San Diego numbers, but uh, they've really mirror. I've looked at the federal numbers, and I've and they they tend to mirror the trend. And when you, when you see the trend, you're going to look at this no matter what part of the country you're in, and you're going to go, yeah, that makes sense. That sounds kind of like uh, what I'm going through. So if you're in the state of Ohio, if you're in the state of Florida, if you're in Texas, or if you're in New York, Illinois, it really doesn't matter. It's it's pretty much going to be very similar to where you're at. Uh, so one of the things we're going to look at is the San Diego Union Tribune, which is our paper here. They do what I think is the best coronavirus data portal in the country. I mean, I, I've looked at the federal one. Uh, I've looked at different, you know, Florida, Ohio, I've mentioned those, some other states. And, and the, the, the people that run this are awesome. And what's funny is I've actually emailed back and forth with them and they just, they're doing it because they love data. They're total freaking data nerds. And they were just happy that somebody out there was appreciating them because uh, they put their heart and soul into this. So um, in a land where everything's partisan, you turn on a TV channel and it's trying to aim at Democrats or you switch the channel and then it's trying to aim at Republicans. Uh, these people are about as unbiased as you get. So I do appreciate that and I definitely encourage you guys to check that out. So one of the things that we noticed is they, they, they look at a lot of different things. So they'll look at new cases by day and this is basically since the beginning in the county here. We had our uptick in you know, June, which, you know, kind of came out of the riots. If you look at this, it just started, you know, kind of mid-June, right about mid-June. So it was right after the riots started, went up and it went down. And then we hit the second wave. And obviously, everybody who studied the Spanish flu understands the second wave is always bigger than the first wave. So this is just illustration of that point. So up to this point, we started to see these numbers go up as far as the number of cases. Uh, but one of the things that we started to notice, and I noticed this, and this is, I posted this to the subscribers on the YouTube channel where I publish it, which is called Getting Rich with Street Smarts, Getting Rich from COVID with Street Smarts, where we don't look at, you know, technicals or anything like that, because I'm just not into that. It's boring. It makes me roll my eyes. I, I grew up, you know, in, in, a, in a big, big city in this country, and I understand if you're going to do anything well, you have to do it with your head, with street smarts. And so that's kind of what we're looking at. So we started to see the trends go up, and it's like, all right, well, we can see a trend line going up. So we're going to marry the street smarts with the fact that I studied professional finance uh, in college and graduate school. And so we look at trend lines and regressions and stuff that you probably either know about or don't really care about. Um, so we started to see this go up and then last week I started to notice it go down a little bit. And so I'm thinking, okay, well that's not enough for a trend. And we start to see this go down and down and down. So does that mean that we're over the second wave? Well, no, not necessarily. So one of the things that we got to look at is we got to look at some other stats. So we're not going to look at cumulative cases because the definition of that word, it will always go up. You know, the, 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 the curve might flatten out a little bit but it's always gonna go up just by its very definition. And then we look at deaths. And the deaths have always been very low and we're gonna get into granular stuff on that and, and, and why that makes a big difference. And then we started to see the deaths go up, right? And so this is worrisome, you know, and I, I had, you know, a pretty decent appreciation for the public health officials that they're starting to, you know, 
restrict certain things. It's like, okay, yeah, I sort of understand where you're coming from, even though I think they're morons and how they did it. Uh, we started to see that go up and then we started to see it go down a little bit. And again, I'm thinking, okay, the cases might be going down, but the cases, these are always going to be ahead of the deaths. In other words, if you get tested on, let's say, January 1st, you're not dying on January 1st when you're positive. You die you know, a few weeks later. So it's always a trailing indicator. But we started to see the deaths go down before the curve goes down. So really, the deaths started to go down right as the cases were going up right here. And that's where kind of you see the death curve as we're going to look down. But then as we see the cases go down, that tells us that the number of deaths should go down even further. And again, we have cumulative deaths. That's always, it's never going to go down by the definition of the word cumulative. So we really want to take a look at this and say, are we really over the second wave? Now, the reason it's important is if we're over the second wave, we have the ability to make a ridiculous amount of money in the next six weeks. I mean, that's just a fact of the matter. Uh, there's going to be a ton of money to be made. And when I show you how much money I've made so far, man, that's nothing. I mean, if I cashed out right now, I would hate myself in about six weeks. And there's no way in the world I'm cashing out whatsoever. So we want to test that theory out and say, is the second wave really past us? We don't just want to assume it is and then, you know, look past things and find out we're wrong and then we lose money or make the wrong decision. So we want to take that theory and say, is that valid? Is there any stat out here that's telling us that it's not true? If there's one stat out there that tells us we're wrong, we need to listen to it and back off our theory and come up with a better one. But right now, so far, we have a pretty decent theory that the second wave is coming to an end. It's just that nobody's reporting it yet. So let's see if that's true. So then we go to daily testing. The one thing we've noticed is the testing is up and down, but we see an average trend line. It's about right there. And the trend, the testing is going up. So even though the testing is going up, we start to see the, the cases going down. So what that tells us is the positivity ratio has to have dropped. And if that's the case, then what that really means is that the virus is finding less available hosts to infect. So it either means that you're not being tested because you have no symptoms. So let's say you're a 17 year old and you have no symptoms. Why would you get tested? Like you're just living your normal life. You have nothing wrong with you. Or it goes to somebody who already had it and has the antibodies and it's just, it's dying in the person's immune system. So let's find out if that's actually the case. So then we go to a rolling 14 day average. So it's gone down. We have the spike in June. It's gone up. It got down all the way down to about two and a half percent. And then it spiked up to 14%. And then we see it drop down below 12. So we start to see that positivity thing go down. So this is supporting what we think about the fact that this second wave very well might be over. And the reason is, you know, the virus has basically run into all these people, right? Every single part of this, each vertical line represents a person or a group of people. So the virus hits one of them. But the thing about a virus is once, once you infect somebody and the person gets over it, they're immune. So that part of the population is no longer a viable place for you if you're a virus to want to live. And so we're starting to get a big, big part of the, the population down. As I was talking to my dad, it's basically the best way you could think of this, if we're going to talk about street smarts, is it's like playing single deck blackjack. And the reason I, when I go to a casino, I love playing single deck blackjack is because one, it's not that I can count cards, but I have a pretty good idea of halfway through a deck, for example, how many aces are out there, how many face cards are out there, how many things were 10 are out there, how many things under five are out there, etc. And so I have a good sense where they're at. Now, I don't like those big blackjack things where you have a, you know, a big stream of cards that's that long because you can't make any inference on what cards are out there. But when you think of a virus, think of it this way. You're playing blackjack and all you're drafting are twos and threes and fours and sixes and sevens. Maybe you get some eight and nines up here. Maybe you get one ten and then you're back down to fours and fives and you're two thirds of the way or halfway through the deck, whatever it is. Well, what's left in the deck? Well, you haven't seen any face cards. You haven't seen any aces. So guess what happens is when you start continuing to deal that, that, that deck out, you start dealing high numbers. And if you guys have ever seen the movie 21, it goes through this in a really easy way where you can get a sense of the probability of hitting a high card. It goes way through the roof. And so that's kind of what's happening is we never hit any of the high cards early, but what happened is a large part of the population never got the virus. And so we started to get more people get the virus. What you, what you don't see here is that people are 
the people who haven't got the virus, that part of the population is decreasing rapidly. Or it's just people that just don't have any symptoms. They get the virus and they don't have any symptoms and they won't get it again in the future, which is the kind of hidden part of this. This is just what we know from testing. But if you don't feel like you need to get tested, then you're not going to be part of this group or cohort, what they talk about in statistics. Blah. Anyway, so we've seen that go down. We've seen the testing go up. We've seen the positivity rate go down. We've seen the cases go down. We've seen the deaths are already ahead of the curve going down. And so then we want to take a look at some other stats. So then we take a look at, um, let's see, daily hospitalizations. And so those are going to go up per day, but we start to see it flatten out. You see right here, it's starting to flatten out, right? We're starting to flatten out. And then we look at the hospital census and we see the amount of people going up for COVID patients has gone up, but really the amount of people in the hospital has almost been the same. So if we look back on October 4th, before any of this nonsense happened, uh, it was at 4,413 people in the hospital. And right now we have 4,700. So really it's about 300 difference. But we've seen this go up by, if we pick at the same time period, 286, and now they're at 19. 1790. So just ballpark it and saying 1500 more people, but there's only 300 more people here, which means 1200 people who normally would be in the hospital are not in the hospital anymore. And they're being offset by that same amount in COVID patients. So what that tells us is the number of people going to the hospital for anything other than COVID is dropping dramatically. Well, why is that? Well, they probably think they're going to die of COVID in the hospital. I mean, if you have a broken bone, I'd rather go to an urgent care than a hospital because I don't want to get COVID. You know what I mean? So that's one of the things we notice, but we want to ask ourselves, who are these COVID patients and why does it matter? And when we go into the, a little bit farther in the more granular data, we're going to see exactly why the, identifying who those people are uh, is going to give us a big input on, you know, kind of what to do in the future and how to invest our money. All right, cumulative hospital patients, again, this is going up. This is basically, you know, it's always going to go up. It's spiked a little bit here and the ICUs have been dead flat for the most part. So we take a look at hospitalizations by week, and again, we see, start to see it go up, and we start to see this go up, and I'm like, okay, well, where is this going? But then we noticed it flattened and went down. So this is basically mirroring the same thing that we noticed in the case count. Let's go back to the positivity count and the death count. Both have started to go back down, and so if that's the case, if the hospitalizations are down, then that means the deaths are gonna go down as well. And that's a predictive factor. So that's how we know the fact that those deaths are gonna go down. Now, if we're gonna talk about deaths for a bit, a little bit, we wanna find out who those are at. And by the way, if you haven't been watching the videos on my YouTube channel, how to get, or getting rich from COVID with street smarts, we go over this a lot. Um, so you can watch some of the more recent videos and we'll talk about it in greater detail. But we started to notice that Basically, if you're under, and this is actually new, if you're under 20, we've had 22,000, 10,000, let's call it 11,500, 33, 34,500 people positive tests of COVID. And it used to be zero, but only one person died who was under 20. Now that ratio is ridiculously low. I mean, one divided by 34,500, I'll let you do the math, but I'll give you a hint. It starts with 0 0.000, okay? And you can fill in the rest of the numbers. I mean, it's ridiculously low but we start to notice that even people who are 20 to 29 these are the people that graduate from college or get out of school early in their work career and they really need to get a job but they're getting shut down from the government 40 basically call it 50,000 people uh positive tests of covid 10 have died again if you want to put that in a in a, in a number it's point zero 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 and you can fill in the rest of the numbers there it's ridiculously low but as we start to get over 60, that's where you start to see a jump in death percentage. And when you get over 80, I mean, think about this. 6,300 people have been positive for COVID. 1,500 have died. That's basically 25%. It's not a good sign. Um, or that's hospitalized. And then have died, basically 1,000 divided by 6,400. It's about 15% of the people that get it. So if, you, if 100 old people get it, 15 of them are not making it. So that's kind of where things are at. So we're going to take a look and see if that's a more recent trend or if these are kind of the old early March trends. Because it could be that a lot of these numbers were in March when they didn't know better. And now that these seniors are like not seeing their families, maybe they're just not dying anymore. Um, so let's take a look at this and we're going to see, you know, which one of those is true. Are these, are these people dying now 
you know, and maybe not before, or is it evenly, or did these people really die in March and April, but they're not really dying anymore, but we're getting like the younger people dying now, um, because that makes a difference. And if you get the younger people dying, then it makes sense to close the places or, or really, you know, try to limit as much as is possible the younger people congregating. But if it's the older people getting it, then that changes things entirely. Because if it's all eight people, you know, why are you closing the bars? Like <laughs> the 80 year old people are not hanging out in bars. All right. So uh, we're not getting the race thing because I think the race thing is it's, it's, it's a false flag. It's a, not false flag. It's a false, um, it's kind of a red herring. Like it doesn't matter your race necessarily as a big thing as it does a lot as we've seen with COVID as far as your health conditions are. So we're going to take a look at that as well. Um, so as we start to look at the more recent COVID deaths, so there's 102 pages here. Um, this one shows basically the date, the age, sex, race, ethnicity, HHSA service region. It's basically the part of San Diego they're in um, and an underlying medical condition. So when we talk about the, the area, uh, do I even have that here? It's basically, you know, are you down by the border? Are you inland? Are you by the ocean? Or are you up north by Orange County? And one of the things we notice is underlying medical conditions. Every single one of these, except for this 64-year-old person, has an underlying medical conditions. Well, let's take a look at the ages. 62, 66, 71, 93. I mean, dude, if you lived at 93, you live a great life. 81, 31, but that person had underlying health conditions. I'm, guess, I'm guessing they are a type 1 or type 2 diabetic, or they're 450 pounds, one of the two. 80, 89, 81, 92, again, long, long life. 74, 64, 85, 83, 70, 90, 90. Again, if these two people, um, you know, that's a great life. You're living to 90 years old, but these people were unhealthy. They had underlying health conditions. Not that they were old, but they were old and unhealthy. So then we go to the day before. Underlying health conditions, boom, 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 boom. Yes, all the way across the board. Let's look at their ages, 70s, 80s, 60s, 80s, 80s, 60s, 94, uh, here, nine, uh, 59, here's your young one, 25, but with underlying health conditions. So either, they're either massively obese or they probably have diabetes. 94, this person is probably the oldest person that ever lived in their family. 85, 78, 88, 83, 53. I mean, there's one of your young ones, 53 and not healthy. All right, we'll go one more. All right, 43, underlying, again, all underlying health conditions, yes, across the board, 80s, 70s, 86, 76, 96. This person never probably thought they were going to live to be 96. 70s, 80s, 93, et cetera. So one of the things we found is, going back to this, is the case numbers are going positive, right? And those could be younger, like those definitely could be younger people. I mean, we look at Let's go to, I want to say it's this one. Let's go to the age breakdown. Is it on this one? No, it's on the next one. So the age breakdown, and these are probably, what it tells us most likely is that these are the people that are testing positive. They're young, healthy or not, it's hitting all the young people on there. So they're the ones testing positive. But when we look at the deaths, all the deaths are over here. These are the people testing, these are the people testing positive, and these are the people dying. And so what happened is our government, and, and I'm glad that, you know, if we look at this, we've been able to tell for sure that, that you know, the young people are, are testing positive, the old people are dying, and we've tried to prove that wrong. We haven't been able to do that. We have very detailed information showing that, and we've, showed, and we've shown that the curve for the number of people getting it is dropping and the deaths are dropping. In other words, the virus isn't having a whole lot of places left to go. It doesn't really matter how contagious the virus is. If that virus, you know, keeps going out of somebody's, you know, lungs and then going into the next person, the next person has antibodies, that virus is dead. It's not going anywhere, right? So we've noticed that it's, you know, the positives are going up, yet the only people dying are really without, with rare, rare exception of the old people. So we say, well, what does that mean? Well, it means right now the market has been betting on the fact that everything's closed, it's not getting any better, and you know, our movie theater's open? No. Our amusement park is open? No, unless you live in Florida. Are sporting events having fans? Generally not, unless it's NFL football. And so people are just skittish on that sense. But we start to notice this big trend hitting that 
the curve is going down. There's, a, there's fewer places for this virus to thrive and replicate without being wiped out by T cells. So what does that mean? It means that in the market, you have in a market that's about to explode. I mean, think of it this way. Let's say it's a, go back to 1993 and you have a time machine and you're able to figure out that the internet is about to get started and you're about to have a dot-com boom, right? You'd throw any amount of money you have. Think about it. If you had a chance to invest in Amazon or Apple back in the day when they first started, you'd do it in a heartbeat. You'd buy as much as possible. I mean, think about the modern equivalent. Let's say you'd, you had a chance to invest in Tesla early on. Jeez, you'd make a, money, a lot of money. But if you really want to talk about insane money that you can make, think about Bitcoin. Think about if you invested a Bitcoin and it was $100 a coin. I mean, that's insane. You'd be really, really crazy rich right now. So the ability to make money in anything like a stock market or from any emerging trend is you have to be able to forecast where that trend is going. And we've done that pretty demonstra uh, demonstrably today. We know that the virus is finding fewer places to go. Um, it's only killing old people for the most part, which kind of sucks, really, especially since I have an 83-year-old dad and a 73-year-old mom. Like, I am not rooting for that whatsoever. But it's pointing to the fact that as these case numbers go down and the fact that the public policy is based on those case numbers, what we can forecast is that the, the places are probably going to open up. And we've actually seen it happen where you look at politicians like Gavin Newsom and you look at people like, we'll take a look at these real quick. So Gavin Newsom, open restaurants, which by the way, is probably not a sentence that's ever been said because he's been the biggest person in trying to shut people down. So we'll take a look at this and all right. So one, we see restaurants are starting to rebel against them. Um, uh, but two, let's see, Gavin Newsom, we'll just say shut down. And we'll say harmful, because I know where I'm going with this. All right, so I'm not sure why it doesn't show on here, but um, one of the things that he had talked about here was, you see a lot of bad stuff about Gavin Newsom on here. Um, he, he basically came out and said that, you know, the shutdowns is probably not a good thing and you know we probably shouldn't have done it early on so then we go to andrew cuomo and i know we're going to find this so then we go to andrew cuomo who is the uh governor of the state of new york and it says his tone shifts after a month of coordinated lockdowns and he basically just said it's stupid in fact we'll take a look at this real quick we'll open this up Oop. Yeah, so the state intends to use COVID-19 testing to reopen restaurants, art centers, and theaters. Are they open yet? No, but they're already talking about it. And then we want to go to the troll. And I don't say that as an insult. She just literally looks like a troll. Lori Lightfoot, who is the mayor of Chicago. She looks like, oh, not a troll. I'm, that's not true. I, I'm, I'm sorry about that. A lemur. <laughs> she looks like a lemur, um, which is true. Lemurs would admit that. All right, so then we start to notice that in Chicago, which is, by the way, one of the biggest Democrat places ever, uh, is now an advocate of opening bars and restaurants as quickly as possible. And she got overruled by the state governor, but that's probably going to change. So we start to see things turning. But the thing is, nobody's, you know, if you're not putting your money where your mouth is, you're going to lose out on it. So one of the things we want to look at is we want to take a look at um, and we promised this earlier, we want to look at the stocks that you want to, you know, look to buy and to stay away from. Now, the stocks you want to stay away from are ones that thrive in the presence of lockdown. So Zoom is doing really well. Zoom's not going to be around tomorrow. I'm just telling you right now, I, I think I do Zoom once a week only because I do it for a podcast. And I pretty much am telling you right now, I just, I'm, I'm over Zoom and I'm not doing it anymore. And I think a lot of people are kind of getting to that point. Um, I think kids are going to grow up hating Zoom. Like you're going to see kids grow up and they're going to want nothing to do with Zoom whatsoever because they're staring at their computer for four hours a day. Um, which, by the way, if you want to get kids to, to lower their screen time, make them sit in front of a computer for four hours a day. And boy, they're not going to want to go anywhere near their cell phones for a while. Um, so things like that, things where, you know, they're all take home stock, they're stay home stock. So Amazon's probably going to do well just because their market share. Um, but any stock where you're basically 
staying at home and watching it a ton. So Netflix, I think Disney Plus is good in the beginning, but you're going to see that drop off. Hulu, um, things like that, you're going to see a massive problem. But the areas that are growing really, really quickly, and again, you've seen this jump. This is basically, oh, this is the last day, um, are places where it's travel, tourism, sports betting, uh, oil, and what was the other one we're going to do? Oil. Yeah, and just travel in general. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. But if you looked at me, I basically started with, I invested about 33000 in it. This is where we hit in June, where the, we're right before the riots hit, went up, the riots went up, the coronavirus numbers went up at that point, flattened out just like we saw it. And then as soon as the vaccine got announced, and it was the vaccine got announced on November, I want to say 5th, right here, you start to see the numbers go way up. But it's not up like we want it to do. Look at, as soon as, as soon as you start to see hope that everything's going to get better. In other words, we're looking at basically the fact that, let's, in fact, we'll take a look at here. I'll show you. This is the number that really represents it. As soon as we start to see the number got down all the way to 2.5%, basically, right around this area, 3 2.5%, they started to open up restaurants. I mean, they started really relaxing a lot of things out here in California for sure. Then we started to see... Um, this massive jump, but yet after the vaccine, we've seen a big jump, but not quite the spike that we've seen here, which tells us this story tells us that people are eager and there's a lot of pent up demand for people traveling, getting out, visiting places, going to concerts, going to amusement parks, going to their timeshare, any number of things um, that are out there. And here we see a more measured response. And I start to see on this, it's basically a combination of this going up and people who are just leery. Now, I say this all the time in my podcast, P P uh, Bear, uh, Warren Buffett always says, be fearful when people are greedy and greedy when people are fearful. And he said the best time to buy is when, well, Baron von Rothschild said the best time to buy is when there's blood in the streets, but Warren Buffett was a little nicer. He said the best time to buy is when the business is on the operating table. And so we start to see this go up. But one of the things that I'm projecting is you're going to see a spike like this go up probably in the next six weeks. When you start to see things go up, when you start to see the old people get vaccinated, and again, we didn't really talk about that before, but they were, pri they were prioritizing essential workers and healthcare professionals, which I do get that over old people. And yet we've seen the numbers of the old people dying. I mean, it's like they're everywhere, right? This is all the people who are dying. And if you start to see that the states are, are basically changing their tone. And when we see that, you're gonna see these death counts absolutely, where is this at here? No, it's on the first page. You're gonna see these death counts absolutely plummet and flatten out. And when we see that, there's gonna be, you, know, you combine that with shutdown fatigue, you're gonna to start to see people absolutely clamor and demand that things open up. So, and that doesn't even count the fact that you see restaurants going out of business or state budgets um, having issues because their sales tax and property tax collections are not going very well, but you're going to see this absolutely skyrocket up. So with that being said, let's talk about the stocks where we're actually, you know, where we're at making money. So pardon for me for not having this open yet, but let's go ahead and open up our spreadsheet. All right, and so I'll walk you through. If this is your first time here, I'm just gonna walk you through a little bit how we do it. So I have a tab for holdings, this is what I own. I have a list, this is kind of our master sheet where we update prices, and we'll go through that in a little bit. We prioritize that based on upside, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And then we have tabs here where we, we track one day movement and two day movement, so we can get a sense on who the big winners and losers are over a day or two. And then we have projections, which is gonna tell us where we think we're gonna end up. So the first thing we're gonna look at is our holdings. And so in this case, uh, one of the things that I always say is you don't want to look at the glamour muscles. These are your biceps and pec muscles. So what everybody wants to have, total gain, current value, percent gain, things like that. But the most important, uh, the most important stat you need to look at is what's called a cost basis. And in business, it means what you bought your stock for. So if you buy a stock for 10 bucks and it goes to 100, it's great that you made 90 bucks, but it's more important that you only bought it for 10 bucks. Now, if you take that same stock and you buy it for 70 and it goes to 100, yet you know, yeah, you made 30 bucks, but the guy next to you made 90. And so it's important to keep this as low as possible. So we always focus on trying to find opportunities to drop the cost basis, which we're going to talk about a little bit. All right. 
So, and we're gonna get back to our gains in a little bit. So we look at the price and then we, the current price that we have for a day, and then we look at February 20th, which is the day that everything plummeted. So if we look at, we'll pick a stock here, go Soho, which is a travel, it's a travel stock or hotel. I think they do some casinos. Honestly, one of my favorite stocks. And we look at them historically over the last year, February 20th hit and they were worth six bucks a share, got all the way down to basically $1.45 and they're sitting here at 275 right now. And then if we look at them over the past five years, they're basically really consistent until COVID hit. So you have this massive drop in value um, that you wanna take advantage of. So we do that and then we basically come to an upside, which is basically this number divided by that number. So 603 divided by 275, which is today's price, is an upside of 2.19. And that means that if basically, with a presumption that we get back to our February 20th price, if you, if you buy today, you're gonna triple your money, or a little more than double your money, I take it back, you're gonna a little more than double your money. And so with that being said, um, we wanna take a look at the upside. So we take these same numbers, but we rank it by upside. And so AHT, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, Ashford Hospitality Trust does uh, hotels and casinos, um, if you bought today 268 and it goes back to its regular price of 2560, you're gonna make 10 times as much money. So if you invest 100 bucks, you're gonna come out with 955, actually no, $1,055. So that's really awesome. Um, Yuko, which is an oil stock, it basically, you know, I'm not gonna go into the details of it, but it's an oil stock. Um, it's currently at 41. If it goes back to its price a year ago of almost 400, the same thing applies. Now, on the other side, uh, the same thing. Once it goes under zero, what it means is it's already met its February price. So in this case, we look at, let's say, Caesars Entertainment, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. It's at 80 bucks right now. It was at 70 bucks beforehand. And so it doesn't mean it's not going to make, it doesn't mean it's, it's stopped made more money. It just means that we, that assumption we have has already been met, which is a really awesome thing. Then we talk about movement. We're not really getting into that too much, but we just measure kind of where things went. We rank the movement so we could see who the biggest loser of the day is and what the big winners of the day is, but it's Martin Luther, or it's, uh, yeah, it's MLK day. So there's not a lot of stock movement today. And then we look movement over the last two days and we can see which ones dropped the most and which one made the most in a given two days. So with that being said, one of the things that you notice right here is we're gonna take a look at our holdings right here. And a lot of the stocks we have are either casinos, oil, travel, um, or like airlines, things like that. So we have, let's take a look at some of the big, big producers we have here. So we're gonna highlight some of these major producers we have as far as what the, returns are, and we're gonna talk about their commonalities and why, obviously, if we talked about everything we've talked about so far, uh, they're not anywhere near done um, earning what we wanna earn. All right, so we'll highlight all these, and yeah, that's good. All right, so let's talk about Azul. Azul Airlines is, is, a, is, Azul is Portuguese for blue, and it's the major airline in Brazil. Uh, they fly all over, they do a lot of commercial stuff, they do supplies, they do passenger air flights. They've more than doubled. So when you see 100% here, that means it's doubled It's you know, doubled what I bought it for. If it's at 157, it means it's made two and a half times what I have bought it for. So just think of adding a one to the first number. Um, so obviously airlines, you buy it in a pandemic and you buy a dominant um, government subsidied airline, by the way, Brazil does a lot of corporate subsidies down there, especially for their domestic companies. Um, and it's more than doubled their airline. But we're gonna, but if we look at them right now, we look at, in fact, we're gonna, we'll take a look at this. We'll go to our projections and we'll do the same thing we did here. So the reason is I have some other data on here that we wanna take a look at as well that really supports kind of the fact that even though these people, I've made a lot of money on some of these, um, on some of these stocks, the biggest part of the earnings is still yet to come. All right, let me get SIG. Let's. All right, not sure why that went to 91%. That's kind of odd. All right, so we'll take a look at this guy. 
And are there other ones we want to highlight? Nah, we'll keep it there. All right, BHR, it's Bremer Resorts. Um, and they do small casinos and hotels. So just think Ozark, kind of things like that. We've more than two and a, we've made about two and a half times what we're going to do. And this one, um, you know, we'll take a look at some upside here. This one has an upside of 4.0 from what we bought it for. So this one we're anticipating, we're right now we're at, what is it? We're at 6,400 that we have in our stock right now. We're anticipating earning about 11,000. We take a look at Azul and Azul. Uh, we have about $6,000 in this stock. We're anticipating being around almost 11,000. Crestwood Equity, they are an oil stock. They do oil production and logistics. And we've made, we quadrupled our money on that. And yet we look at that right now and there's still more money to make. We still think we're going to make another 100% on this. So that one still has room to grow. So it tells you just how lucrative some of these stocks are. All right, so I lost my highlight there. We'll take a look at Caesars Entertainment. That is more than quadrupled. It's on its way to quintuple. I bought it for, I bought $5,000 worth and I now have 21 grand on it. But what's really amazing, well, this one actually we talked about has already met it. We only thought we we're gonna make 18,000. Um, but that, one of the things you gotta understand about this stock, oh, come on, get over there. Let me highlight or just save that so in case I lose it, uh, is this stock did not anticipate sports betting. So there's a lot of, even though their casinos are closed in Vegas, they're making a lot of money. And the reason we pick casinos is because 90% of Nevada's economy is Las Vegas. And so they're just not going to not stay open. They will open. And you're going to see a lot of people, especially the Western part of the country that just, they, Vegas is a thing. You just do it. You go to shows, you gamble, you, you know, you just get out of town. And this is one of the big dominant casinos, if not the most dominant casino, along with MGM uh, in Vegas. So this one is going to go even higher. Every, this is one of my favorite stocks. This, they do all the ATMs in Vegas. So if you've ever been to Vegas or a casino, you understand that those people are making a lot of money on ATM fees. Uh, and so when traffic was down, they're not making any money. So I bought this one really early at four bucks a share. I got it now at 13.50. It's basically tripled what I invested on it, uh, but it still has a lot more to go. So we're anticipating making, you know, gosh, another five grand on it, you know, at least. All right, take a look at Fang. This is Diamondback Energy. Love the name. Uh, it's an oil stock. It basically two, made two and a half times what I've had on it, and yet it still has room to grow. Um, all right, let's take a look at some other ones here. PVAC is another oil stock. This one's done really well. I've tripled my money, but we're not done. There's still 100 and plus percent of money that we're anticipating making at the very minimum. Uh, Redwood Trust, they do a, they're a mortgage REIT. So think of it this way. Banks basically sign up a whole bunch of mortgages and then instead of keeping them on their books, they sell them to the bond market. The bond people put it together as a bond. They basically pay the banks a certain amount of money per month. And then basically, as long as the people keep making their mortgage payments, um, they basically make it money in their borrowing costs versus how much money they're making, you know, how many people are making back in mortgages. The higher the payback rate, the better these things go because these things pay dividends, which is why people keep them. And, it, and that basically the demand for that type of stock keeps the stock price up. And what you got to understand about COVID is you're thinking, okay, well, are people making their mortgage payments? Well, you have to understand is COVID hit the service sector more. These are more renters than owners. And usually if you've made over $100,000, I think they said 90% of the people are making more in 2020 than they did in 2019. So these people are paying their mortgages. And this stock has tripled as a result uh, because of that. All right, Signet Jewelers, this one's crazy. I, I can't believe this one. I only invested $1,000 in this one. And I am really upset about that. Um, they basically are the mall jewelry stores. So think of David or uh, K's. They do, um, what's the one in the mall where they do the ear piercings? Uh, Piercing Pagoda. They do a whole bunch of stuff like that. And they've gone online and they've, had, they've absolutely been the leader in online portals. So even though the malls and stores have been closed, they've been selling diamonds like crazy. And by the way, if you're kind of making on the high end of income, diamond prices are cheaper than they normally are. And people are spending a lot of money because they know they're getting a killer deal on it. So this one has gone up six times. I bought it for $1,000. It's worth over $6,500. 
which is just absolutely insane. And I, and I, I would normally say, okay, let's sell it because we're doing really good on it. <coughs> but this one still has room to go. All right, and then VVI, this one used to be, believe it or not, Greyhound, uh, but they are a travel and entertainment company. They do tours and um, just think of anybody that goes around the country. They also do, I, I believe this is the one that's the Grand Old Opry. Um, so think about Nashville, whenever people, you know, or feel good about traveling again, you, it's going to the Country Music Hall of Fame. I mean, they're like the absolute capital of country music. This one is going to absolutely go on a tear. I've already doubled my money, and this one isn't even close to where it's going to get. I'm anticipating this one. Uh, we're sitting at about 6,500. We're anticipating doubling that again. So overall, I'm sitting here. I put, you know, I put, I'll take a look at this one right now. I've put in thirty-three thousand dollars into investing i'm sitting at 113 right now and that's after i'm actually at 142 but once you take the margin out i'm at 113 and what we're looking at at the end of this and this is probably in the next couple months is we're looking at probably being somewhere around 300 grand so the question is what are you going to do with that money what's motivating you well i'm not motivated by money so that's not it i'm going to law school and i need to pay for my law school and so this money is going to pay for law school. And also, um, I used to live by the beach for a while. I got married. We moved inland. And I want my beach house back. So the rest of this money is going to go toward a down payment for our beach house. But the whole point is this. I've made a lot of money on this. I've made you know, close to $100,000 in about eight months. And that's nothing. I mean, if I were to get out of it right now, I would actually be just punching myself in the face over and over. So the question is, what are you going to do? Are you going to sit on your hands and just watch the news and believe everything you read, which by the way, you should never, ever, ever do because I used to be in television media and these people are, are first of all, they're the dumbest people on the planet. You are a hundred percent smarter than them and I'm not sucking up to you. It's because they are stupid, stupid people. They are really dumb people, especially the anchors in media. Second of all, they're doing everything they can to drive, uh, drive you into being obsessed with what they're talking about. And that could be true on CNN on the left and MSNBC on the left. And really, you could throw in pretty much everybody on the left or Fox News, Newsmax and OAN on the right. But if you sit back and you look at the data and you understand what's really going on before it gets reported, it's the equivalent of being an inside trader. And this is what I wanted to get to early on. It's like trading like you know what the stock's going to do. Imagine if you knew ahead of time what Tesla was going to do. You'd buy as early as you possibly could because you knew it was gonna be a winner. Same thing with Amazon, same thing with Apple, same thing with everybody. You'd know what to do, you'd know what stocks to avoid, and you'd know what stocks that you wanna to clamor toward. And in this case, we look at casinos, oil, sports betting, um, travel, you know, things like that, where once the, once the handcuffs are off, and once there's the mass, the mass mask burning that you're gonna have, where people are just sick of masks and don't wanna see them at all again, how are they going to behave? And they're going to go to sports events. They're going to get on cruise ships. We didn't even talk about cruise ships. Uh, they're going to go to movies. They're going to go to amusement parks. They're going to travel. Um, hotels are going to go through the roof. Casinos are going to go through the roof. I mean, we're social animals. So the question is, what are you going to do? Now, if you have any questions, reach out to me. Shoot me an email. I Believe it or not, I would love to answer your questions. Uh, if you have a question about a stock or what to do, maybe you're sitting here going, Matt, this is way over my head. I need help or you know, I'm just getting started. I don't even know what I don't know. Well, just make sure you reach out to me and I would love to help. I was here a long time ago. Now, I will tell you this right now. I'm not a professional stock trader. I don't have my series six or seven or 24, or whatever the numbers are. I hate trading stocks, which is believe it or not, which, which believe it or not, yet this is what I'm doing. But when you take all the risk out of a stock market, I'm, you have to be a moron not to invest. And right now, the risk, I mean, is sit you know it's not it's easy to it's hard to catch a knife when it's falling on the ground when it's falling in midair but once it hits the ground anybody can pick it up but all the returns are gone at that point so don't wait until all the good news happens you want to get started now and you've seen this and i'll tell you right now we'll take a look at some of the holdings because you might say well matt you have you you know have you lost money well no i haven't lost money let's take a look at the stocks that are in the red right now and these are ones again this is for credibility that are below where I bought them for. Let's talk about exactly what's going on and why they won't be there. First of all, Texas Hospitality, this is an oil stock I have, and they basically do, um, they do accommodations and food service for all the people that work in the oil fields in West Texas. So 
They're, they do all the apartments, they do the catering, uh, everything like that. That's down 12%. This stock has been, you know, is basically been going up, but it's been going up slower than the oil, other oil stocks. But once you start to see the demand for oil go up, which is what happens when, you know, restaurants open up and they need more food coming in, more food goes to the distributors from the farms. Guess who does it? The trucks. And guess when, you know, who has to, you know, how do you get, how do you get all the food from the farms to the distributing centers and from the distributing centers to the restaurants? Well, you got to put gas in your car. And to do that, you need to drill for oil. And to do that, these people, you know, have to sleep somewhere and they have to eat something. So this is going to go up dramatically. Let's take a look at NXTD. This is actually a non-COVID stock. It's actually one of the ones I saw that was just an absolute no-brainer um, that doesn't really follow what we're doing. This one, they do cybersecurity for the internet of things. So think about like when you have a TV that's connected to your Wi-Fi, a thermometer is connected to your Wi-Fi, maybe your fridge is connected to your Wi-Fi, maybe your coffee maker is connected to your Wi-Fi. I, I want to get a shower that's connected to my Wi-Fi. They do cybersecurity that basically allows it keeps people from hacking it. So I bought this not too long ago. So this one's in the red a little bit right now, but make no mistake, this one's going to explode probably in the next two months. Maybe not the same time frame that we're looking at for the rest of our stocks, but it's still going to do really well. Corsair, they do hardware components for gaming. Uh, just think of Sony PlayStation, things like that. So I bought this one really recently too. And again, if you think gaming's like going anywhere, you're insane. So think of Nintendo Switch, everything like that. They are the dominant player and they've been buying out competitors and vertically integrating. So this stock is gonna go nowhere but up. And then lastly, AMC, this is our one COVID stock, it's in the red. The only reason it's in the red is they basically were trying to stave off bankruptcy. And to do that, they basically issued a whole bunch of new shares, which watered down the value of the current shares. It's the only reason it went down. But if you don't think that when they start opening up the, cas the casinos, the movie theaters, and you have a slew of big blockbuster movies, we're talking about Fast and the Furious, Top Gun, Marvel movies coming out. They have purposefully not brought those to the theaters because they it costs like 200, 300 grand to make, 300 grand, 200 to 300 million to make these. And they're not gonna sit here and release it on HBO Max. Heck no. They are literally saving it up for when the massive pending demand comes out and those theaters are packed again. This one is going to go from negative 25 to probably 300 in the matter of two months. No joke. So with that being said, you've seen where these are at. You've seen I've basically doubled what I bought all these initial stocks for. You've seen I've, I've earned two and a half times my initial deposit. And that's after the margin. So that's counting everything. And yet the big number we're looking at that we're going to walk out of here with is 300 grand. So the cool thing is I've made that money. The bad, the even better thing is the real big money hasn't even happened yet. So it's time to get started. If you need any help, have any questions, remember no such thing as a dumb question. The dumb questions are the ones that everybody asks that you're not asking. So if you're not asking just your, you know, other people that are watching this are, so make sure you uh, email me and I'll be glad to help you in whatever way you can. So that being said, I will talk to you soon. To get more information on the sales cheat code, go ahead and click on the subscribe button below. Also down below in the video description, you know, down there, there's a link that takes you to our website that gives you additional content, some additional freebies that we have, and gives you information on some programs that we have that have been proven to help people to make sales easy so that you can make the kind of money you want, live the lifestyle that you've always wanted, and not have to struggle in the process. And what might be the coolest thing of all is you don't have to put much effort into it. It truly is a cheat code that most people don't know about. And it's a cheat code that can change your life today. So click on the link below and let me help you start to experience these results starting right now.